Hi guys, welcome, welcome. My name is Scott, and today we're looking at what might just be the best dinosaur miniature ever made. We're looking at the Apex Predator from Conquest The Last Argument of Kings. So let's go ahead and dive into this model. Now before we get into the painting, I just wanted to show you the size of this model. So here's a Troglodon from Age of Sigmar, and here's a Dreadsarian. As you can see, it's big enough to substitute as a Dreadsarian. Now if you would like to get a hold of this model, go ahead and check the description. I've left a link to the Parabellum web store where you can buy this model. To get this model ready for painting, we've primed it using Wraithbone Spray Primer from Citadel. Our base skin color for this dinosaur is going to be Citadel's Ogryn Camo. We're going to paint this everywhere that there's exposed skin, but we're going to be careful not to get this on the feathers. Once we have that base skin color in place, we're going to use Karak Stone. We're going to paint this on the belly of the T-Rex. And you can extend this up the sides as far as you want. The key is to just go with what looks natural to you. We're going to paint the nose of the dinosaur using Skaven Blight Dinge. We're also going to put this color on the armored scales that are on the hands and feet of the dinosaur. I wanted to make the eyes pop on this dinosaur, so I used Dark Reaper and I painted all the way around the scales that are surrounding the eyes. With all the base colors put on the skin, it's time to shade this, and we're using Ethonian Camo Shade for this. Now, if you wanted to, you could put more different colors on the skin. This shade is going to blend them all together so they look like they're naturally occurring. Once the shade is dried, we're going to take Karak Stone again, and we're going to dry brush this over all of the skin. And this is going to give it a very tan look, and it's going to almost make it so you can't tell that there's green under there, and that's exactly what I was going for when I painted this. Now we're going to do a second layer of dry brushing, and this time we're going to use Ushabti Bone, but we're only going to dry brush this on the belly of the dinosaur, and up the center of the tail on the bottom. Our next step is going to be to dry brush Thunderhawk Blue on the nose and around the eyes of the dinosaur. And this is going to make it all look like it's the same shade of blue, but there's going to be a slight gray tint to the scales that were gray before. Our final layer of dry brushing on the skin is going to be Dawnstone, and we're going to paint this on the knees, the joints, and any spots that we think should look a little bit more roughed up on the skin of the T-Rex. I wanted to go really bright with the feathers, so I'm going to start with Jokero Orange. We're going to paint this on all of the feathers. Now I find it easiest to start at the head and follow the flow of the feathers back to the tail. That way you don't mess up your brush while you're painting this. Now on the borders of the feathers, anywhere that it makes contact with the scales, I painted Averland Sunset to make those feathers just appear a different color. I did this across the entire length of the dinosaur. To shade the feathers, I used Contrast Nasdrag Yellow. Now this was kind of an experiment, and anytime you do an experiment, it's always a good idea to test out the shade on a test model. That way you're not surprised when the outcome isn't quite what you expect. Once the shade is dry, I want to build the original colors back up. So I'm going to bring Jokero Orange out again, and I'm going to dry brush this just on the feathers that I originally painted orange. I'm going to do the same thing using the Averland Sunset. And this is a pretty common process with dry brushing. You tend to go back and forth between multiple colors until you get the blending exactly the way you want it. I decided I wanted the edges on my feathers to be just a little bit crisper, so I go through with Troll Slayer Orange, and I'm going to edge highlight the edges of every single feather on the model.
We're going to do the same for the yellow feathers. We're going to use Uriel Yellow. We're going to go through and highlight the edges of each yellow feather on the dinosaur. Now there will be some feathers where you'll do one line orange and one line yellow to help the transition. Now that the feathers are done, we're going to begin working on the scars that are on the face of the dinosaur. And I've used Screamer Pink to fill in the scars. And just be careful not to get this on the scales around the scars. Once that base color is dried, we're going to use Carberg Crimson, and I'm going to shade this in those scars. With that in place, I'm going to take Pink Horror, and I'm going to just do some horizontal lines inside the scar. And this is going to create the appearance of different fibers of the skin and tissue holding this scar together. Now we're going to begin working on the claws of the dinosaur. We're going to begin by basing this with Dryad Bark. Just be careful not to get this on the skin at the base of the claws. Once we're done with that base color, we're going to take Bane Blade Brown. And we're just going to do small lines going up the claw. And we're leaving a gap between these different lines, and this creates a more natural appearance for the claw. Now it's time to work on the eyes. We're going to take Averlin Sunset and we're going to base coat each of the eyes and just be careful not to get this yellow on the skin around the eyes. You just want to get this in the actual eye itself. Now we're going to shade the eye using Cassandora Yellow. Once our shade is dried, we're going to take Uriel Yellow and we're going to put a dot in the center of the eye. Now your focus here is to put the dot where you intend to put the pupil, because the pupil is going to be in the center of this dot. We're going to do the pupil using Abaddon Black, and we're just going to put a tiny dot in the very center of the eye. Now when you do this, try to get both of your pupils so they are looking in the same direction. This isn't a chameleon after all. With the eyes done, we're going to begin working on the saddle of the dinosaur. And we're going to start with Barak Nar Burgundy. And there are these fabric pieces on the neck and underneath the fur on the back of the dinosaur. And we're going to paint those both with this color. Once that base color is in place, we're going to shade that fabric using Carberg Crimson. Now we're going to edge highlight all the fabric areas using Screamer Pink. And this is a controlled highlight. If you go too crazy on this, it will turn your fabric pieces pink rather than the purple color they currently are. At this point, it's a good idea to start working on the skin of the Wadroon that's riding on the back of the dinosaur. I'm starting with Death Guard Green, and I'm just going to paint this over all the exposed skin that is on this rider. We're going to shade the skin using Agrax Earth Shade. This is a brown shade and it's going to darken down the skin and give it a very olive, dirty, weathered look. Once we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to go back through with Death Guard Green again. And we're going to pick out the raised surfaces of the muscles and we're going to leave the dark recesses. Now we're going to do a layer of highlighting using Elysian Green. We're picking just the most raised parts of the muscle where we think the light would catch. Now it's time to return to working on the saddle. We're going to take Storm Vermin Fur and we're going to paint this on the fur that's on the back of the saddle. We're going to shade this fur using Null Oil. Now just be careful not to get this on the areas around the fur, because you don't want to darken down the fabric that we painted previously. While that shade is drying, we're going to go ahead and take Karak Stone. We're going to pick out all of the kind of woven parts of the saddle.
Now we're going to go back through, we're going to use gray sear, and we're going to dry brush this on the fur that we painted before. For the leather straps, we're going to use Mornfang Brown. Now, it's a good thing to point out that at this stage, we're also going to paint the leather parts on the Wadroon that's riding the dinosaur as well. We're also going to take Dryad Bark and use this to paint the hair of the Wadroon and any wooden parts that are on the saddle. Now we're going to paint all of the bones using more gas bone. Now there are bones or horns all the way around the edge of the saddle, and then the rider herself has a mantle that is made out of bones. We're going to paint those in this color. We're going to shade all of the leather parts and the tan parts using Agrax Earthshade. Now just be careful not to get this on the bones because we are going to do the bones using a different shade later on. To shade the bone, we're going to use Contrast Skeleton Horde, and we're just going to wash this very heavily over all the bone. In fact, the heavier the better, especially towards the base of each of the horns that are around the edge of the saddle. Now once all that shade is dried, we're going to use Baneblade Brown, and we're going to dry brush this over all the leather and tan parts of the model. You can go as heavy as you want with this dry brush, it really doesn't matter too much. We're not going to dry brush the bones, we're going to manually edge highlight using Wraith Bone. And our goal, especially on the horns, is to create stripes that follow the curvature of the horn. Now if you feel like the white is too aggressive, go ahead and take a bit of Contrast Skeleton Horde and water it down, and then use it as a glaze over the top of the horns. And this will blend it back in so that, that white isn't quite as powerful. At this point, we're going to begin working on the stone ornament that's on the back of the dinosaur. We're going to use Dawnstone as the base color for this. Now, I see a lot of people doing these out of metallic colors. I chose to go with the assumption that this was made out of stone and then painted over. While the Dawnstone is drying, I'm going to go back through with Baraknar Burgundy. I'm going to paint all of the feathers and ornaments on the rider. And I'm going to shade these and highlight them the same way I did the fabric earlier. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and take Lead Belcher and I'm going to paint all of the different chain links and buckles that are on the model. There's also the blade at the end of the spear on the rider. Now we're going to shade the stone ornaments and all of the Lead Belcher parts using Agrax Earthshade. Once the shade is dried, I'm going to do a very light dry brush using Wraith Bone. And this is just to kind of catch the edges of the stone so that it actually looks like stone and not just a gray and brown mess. I said before I wasn't going to use metallics, but I changed my mind. So I'm going to use Retributor Armor, and I'm going to pick out the skull and a couple of the other details that are on the ornament. And the goal here is to make this look like it is gold leaf, so you can go ahead and leave some spots chipped if you would like. Once that gold is in place, we're going to very quickly go through and just shade it with Agrax Earthshade. And go nice and heavy on this. We want it to look like it's dirty and worn. Now we're going to use Wazdaka Red, and we're going to paint this on just a few of the details, the arches around the skull. Now we're not doing a total coverage here. Our goal is to make it look like this paint has chipped off over time. So we're just doing it in splotches rather than an even coverage. We're going to do the same thing again, but this time we're going to use Oceanic Blue from the Bones Master Paint Series paint line. And with that, we finished painting the Apex Predator. Thank you so much for watching today. I have thoroughly enjoyed painting this model, and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then share it with your friends so they can see this as well. Have a great day, and we'll catch you in the next one.